Okay, so this presentation is dedicated to state-of-the-art performance for financial modeling and algorithmic trading. GraphCorp is a company that has built a chip for machine learning, built from scratch, targeted specifically for machine learning, and we're seeing some really, really nice performance and traction with uh, the problems that deal with uh, financial modeling. Uh, in financial modeling, we have seen that models are typically oversimplified because hedge funds, trading companies, need really, really low latency. And they also need to fight noise. The data from the market is typically very, very noisy. So complex models, unless they are probabilistic models, would not perform really well and will not generalize. So IPU, a processor, intelligence processing unit, enables now advanced, more complex models and probabilistic models that now run faster and are actually tangible. So as a result, the business executives will get deeper insight and better decisions in shorter time. And shorter time will be both on the human scale and on the microsecond scale. So you can uh, be very efficient in many cases. One of the highlights is that uh, IPU delivers 260 times higher throughput at the same latency on LSTM inference for time series analysis. And I will talk more about uh, other numbers and uh, performance primitives. How does it do that? Well, the architecture has uh, two main differences from uh, other processors on the market that are very popular currently. Uh, on IPU, code and data are always in SRAM, so you do not have to care about cache and optimize for that. You can think that you're always in your L0. Very, very uh, high throughput between the compute and the memory. And number two, the programs that run on the IPU in parallel are independent. So you can extract much more parallelism, even at batch size one for machine learning, and have much lower latency. So the IPU is actually a native executor for computational graphs, based on our SDK that we call Poplar. This is another diagram of the processor. The memory spread across the processor, each core has memory which is local and private to that core. There are 1,216 cores on the processor running over 7,000 programs in parallel independently from each other. And the bandwidth between the compute and the memory is uh, 45 terabytes per second, 50 times more than a, GP, um, a GPU has. And we can connect the processors uh, directly through IPU links, building large-scale accelerators with uh, uh, very interesting capabilities. So the business value for algorithmic trading and financial modeling is that now, for inference, you can make smarter decisions, lower latency, models of greater complexity. And for training, the researchers can iterate faster when experimenting to find model architectures, and they can use something uh, more complex and uh, relevant for financial data, like probabilistic models that can help you avoid overfitting and account for noise. And new paradigms of uh, retraining and trading are possible because now you can train not overnight, but you can train uh, every four minutes and uh, help your model adapt to the market that is constantly changing. And in this deck, I will be highlighting LSTMs, non-vectorizable models for inference, and then Markov Chain, Monte Carlo, MCMC, and reinforcement learning models. Example number one, LSTM inference for time series analysis. On this chart, uh, we are showing latency in milliseconds versus throughput, uh, and this is a like-to-like -like comparison. So it's real data, real models, highly optimized both for GPU and for IPU, running in TensorFlow with all the possible optimizations. For batch size one on the GPU, we are 
capable of uh, showing a throughput that is 260 times more at the same latency. So uh, much more efficient for financial modeling based on that. And we have seen LSTMs used uh, for feature generation in many cases, trained on uh, specific uh, synthetic data. Now, if uh, we go uh, to batch size one, uh, you will see the different uh, architectures of LSTM models inference again, one layer versus two layer and also three layer models. So for all of them, the throughput would be roughly 7.4 times higher and the latency is 3.6 times lower. Again, it's real data, real performance uh, that you would see in the, in, your, in the real world. Another aspect uh, that is also very important for trading companies is uh, the efficiency for not vectorized and non-vectorizable models. In some cases, to generate features from the stock data, companies would use different um, algorithms, different pieces of code that would uh, need to run ideally as quickly as possible. So for IPU, you can actually put those uh, codelets on separate cores in separate threads and you will get an incredible speed up. An example of that kind of model, non-vectorizable model, would be sparse random forests, which uh, are, do not run efficiently or quickly on CPU or GPU. So IPU would be an incredible accelerator for that. And on IPU, you can put both your feature generation and your predictions on the processor and make it in just one step, incredibly low latency. So for alpha estimation, uh, when you are trying to find your alpha from alternative data or from your stock prices, uh, some companies, some hedge funds are using uh, the model that is called MCMC, Markov Chain Monte Carlo. Uh, with this model, your predictions are distributions and the weights of the models are also distributions, uh, not just point values. This helps you as a researcher to avoid overfitting and deal with noisy data. So, and also you now can use more complex models that can handle non-linearities of uh, your training data. And MCMC as a method has been uh, long considered too computationally expensive, so people did not use it. Now with the IPU, because of this uh, high memory throughput, you can actually train or get enough samples from the model, not in two hours, but in 4.5 minutes. Or this is a highly optimized customer implementation of the model. So 26 uh, X speed up. Um, you can call it uh, coffee break training. If you do not go into all those optimizations and use plain TensorFlow probability, the speed up would be 8x, and this is a different uh, experiment set. So instead of 6.6 and a half hours, it's trained in um, 45 minutes, so lunchtime training. So people are actually using this and seeing interesting returns that are better than non probabilistic models. Uh, so hedge funds are also uh, doing something that's called risk estimation. And they are trying to estimate uh, so-called full risk profile of a portfolio. So currently models that are used uh, tend to be simplistic as well. But with the IPU, they are now able to use more complex models and estimate latent risk factors more efficiently. It's not just uh, an SVD or robust singular value decomposition, but uh, something else. And ordering quarters uh, are used to identify nonlinear risk factors with uh, some complicated complex relationships between the channels, the prices, and the, the risk factors. So one of the experiments that Seth has uh, run, and he will be presenting uh, a talk on this today at 4 p.m. 
uh, has shown that for variational autoencoders that are great for risk estimation, the speed up is 4x. So uh, we hope this performance will uh, spread through the other hedge funds that are not currently using these techniques and will help them make more money. For portfolio rebalancing, uh, some hedge funds are using, or investment banks, are using reinforcement learning because when you are switching, when you need to navigate from portfolio A to portfolio B, there is the cost, and it's not only transaction fees, but also uh, the, the cost of you interacting with the market and changing the market and killing your alpha. So some companies are using this, and we are showing 13 times uh, improvement of throughput, so lower time to train for RL-based models. And Citadel uh, has recently shared a quote that they are already uh, considering and using the architecture and the architecture of IPU is already enabling them to explore new techniques that have been inefficient or simply not possible before. So we are extremely excited about this collaboration. We are putting our IPUs in uh, PCIe cards and Dell puts our cards into uh, for you chassis like shown here and also here on the display at our booth. It's called Dell DSS 8440 server with IPUs. It delivers 1.6 petaflops of compute in a single chassis, uh, extremely low power consumption uh, compared to some other platforms with uh, similar performance. The processors are available in Microsoft Azure. Uh, you are welcome and we invite you to sign up for a preview in Azure. Uh, we have links to those, uh, to the sign-up sheet, sign-up page on the brochure. And uh, there is a cloud that can be more adapted to the financial companies called Cirrascale, they offer air gap, shared nothing environments, very secure, uh, that uh, can be um, very, very efficient for keeping your IP to you. It's very close to having your workstation under your desk. Nobody can get there. So please uh, visit graphcore.cirrascale.com to get started and either use the Cirrascale Cloud or purchase in small quantities would be easier to purchase from Cirrascale directly, uh, not from uh, Dell that typically prefers larger quantities. So that's it. I'll be happy to answer any questions in more uh, private manner because I cannot hear you from this distance. I wanted also to mention that uh, Citadel today has released a white paper called Dissecting IPU's Architecture with uh, Micro Benchmarking. So it's a very, very interesting paper. And uh, we invite you to go to our website or to archive.org to find it and read it. Thank you.